Hey guys, this video will involve a ton of cutting pipes and welding them back together. I will run you through everything behind our thought process for making this exhaust system and tell you about all sorts of settings I use. It's been a long time coming as we got the car quite a while back now and I'm super excited to get my hands on it finally. We got a box full stainless steel exhaust parts delivered, ready to be transformed into something glorious. They are straights, bends, reducers and a couple of mufflers. For that to happen though, we had to come up with a plan over a couple of beers. Which we did, and are confident it will be great. As long as I manage to build it. Given it's the first time I'm attempting something like this. The sound of the stock exhaust is horrendous, and considering prices for aftermarket exhausts for these cars, we decided we'll tackle this ourselves. And with that, we're ready to make this old beast sound the way it's supposed to sound. Let's get to it. First, we had to get the rear bumper removed. In order to get to the bolts for the rear bumper, you have to remove the rear wheels so you can get to the inner liners that cover up the bolts. Once those were out, it was super easy to unbolt everything. We reinstalled the wheels and had some next-gen assistants helping out to move things along. I then got to work on removing the exhaust, with some rather unorthodox methods at times. The bolts were so rusted and messed up, they took quite some convincing to get off. That just might have been the most exhausting part of the entire build. When the exhaust was removed, I took a couple of measurements to see if everything would fit up in the end, and then we got to work. Before we begin though, let's talk pie cuts. An executive decision has been made to build the entire system with pie cuts as opposed to bends because the bends we had on hand wouldn't be tight enough for our needs, so that's that. I start by making the center line on opposite sides so I can perfectly rotate the pipe in my bandsaw. I'm always using 15 degree pie cuts, 7.5 degrees per side. And after they're cut, I quickly clean them up on my belt sander. These qualify as tight band pie cuts with a radius of just about 63 mm or 2.5 inches, which appears to be standard. I like to work with 15 degrees because I can do 45 through 3 and 90 degrees with 6 pieces respectively. Just like with any pie cut, you can also rotate them against one another to get different angles. I don't know who came up with 9 degree pie cuts and I don't particularly care, but for my taste, they're too small. 15 happens to be the perfect size, which I see more and more lately. Simply easier to work with, they look great and require less welding than 9 degrees. I usually tape the pie cuts with masking tape before tacking them up and remove them again just before welding out. Next we should talk about the X-pipe section, because this might catch some critique, let's say. In order to get it mocked up, I made a series of 45 degree cuts and tacked them together. This will be a full overlap X-pipe. I can see why people would think it might not be the best flowing exhaust in the world, and my concerns were the very same, and still are. However, this will be a 3 inch system as opposed to 2 or 2.5 inch, which would already be plenty enough. Meaning that restrictions shouldn't be an issue. And the main thing is, it will sound incredible thanks to full overlap. I actually decided to go this route because I've seen it recently done on a highly modified 991 GT3 Porsche. Done by a fairly renowned shop here in Germany. And if it's good enough for them, it'll be good enough for us. 
without having seen it done by them, I truthfully would have gone for a regular double 90 degree sex pipe. But we'll see in the end if this worked out. I welded everything with my usual pulse settings. For stainless exhaust systems, I use a 16 cup with 17 to 18 liters per minute or 35-ish CFH pure argon flow. I always calculate my gas flow according to cup size. I take the cup size in liters per minute and add roughly 10% as buffer. The pulse settings on my machine are a result of plenty of trial and error. My settings for 1.5 mm stainless steel are 1.5 pulses per second at 90 amps with 10% background current and 35% uptime. Depending on the situation, I go up to 45% uptime and dial back the amps to about 80, which happens to be the autogenous weld settings of a very popular Instagram welder, which I'll also be using later on. I universally calculate my pulse settings based on material thickness very easily. I take 40 amps per millimeter material thickness, which in my case is 60 amps, and multiply that by 1.5 to reach my pulse amps at one third uptime. I always go 10% background and keep it at 1.5 pulses per second. The pulse welding really helps keeping the temperature and dust distortion controlled, but I still keep rotating the parts so I don't overheat any given section. Again, I haven't done this because it is easier to do it like this. It's not. It's much easier to pop two 90 degree bands together, but I just believe it looks great and should have some sound benefits over a one third crossover X pipe. Time to figure out where everything will sit. I made the X-pipe section on purpose bigger so I can trim off the axis later on. Before I took off the exhaust, I took several measurements and made a couple of marks on the frame as reference points. I taped up a couple of reducers and a 90 degree pie cut bend to figure out where everything will land. And with those measurements, I went back to the workbench. I taped up several 45 degree pie cut bends to be able to figure out how much I have to trim off the X section, so the space between the pipes coming in and going out would be perfect. A quick math session later I had it all worked out and cut everything to its final size. The downside was that I had to tack on some more pipes so my bandsaw could grip the whole thing before cutting off the excess. Sort of tedious, but no way around it, unless I would have had the perfect measurements from the start, which I did not. After cutting everything to size, I quickly taped up the 45s again to confirm everything was going to be in the right spot. Better safe than sorry and all. While the bands I was busy in the background cutting more pie cuts, we were taking a well-deserved break. Honestly, the amount of time it took cutting those pies with a shitty bandsaw like mine was staggering. For the next time I do something like this, I will just buy them directly. But with my brother around spending some quality family time, it wasn't all that bad. Plus, I got to kick his ass in a round of stick fight. Anyway, back to work. Next up, I got the reducer sorted out. What I usually do is after tacking things up, I go over the parts with my three-phase bench grind I restored a few years back. Combined with two nylon wheels next to one another on there, it preps pipes like these beautifully. These nylon wheels work like magic. And then it's just a matter of welding the freshly prepped part out. These had to be made up from two pieces because we are going from a 55mm, which is the 348's cat's exit size, to a full 3 inch. To be honest though, 2.5 inch would have been plenty enough for this being NA and, let's be real, not that much power. To finish up the reducers, I had to still weld on the flat pieces to be able to fit it properly to the cats. I trimmed off the access with an angle grinder and trued up the surface on the belt grinder, before welding these on as well. This time I welded them autogenously, meaning without filler rod, because the fit up was so nice, and it usually goes much quicker. Same pulse settings range as usual.
on to getting the first pie cut bends welded out. After matching up all parts, I made sure everything was perpendicular before taping it up even more, so I can test it on the car. I'm using these two piece flanges that wrap around the pipe and then are bolted up just like regular two hole flanges. I measured up the distance between both sides so I can figure out the bits that have to come between these and the X-pipe section. With everything fitting as planned so far, I tacked up the pie cuts and welded them out as well. The finished bends came out rather nice. I'm well aware I'm not the best welder in the world and that my consistency needs a ton of work, but I'm good with that. I rather learn and pay. Following that, I needed to finish up the X-pipe with all its 45 degree bends. In order to get it all squared up, I set up a thick piece of steel perpendicular to the working surface. This helped me to fixate everything in place until it was aligned flawlessly. Once again, measuring everything from side to side before tacking everything up to avoid errors and additional work to fix things that haven't gone according to plan. At this point, I should mention welding and working with pie cuts is a bit tedious. It takes ages to get them done and costs so much more than regular bends. I'm not talking about just the material cost, but also the cost, for example, the additional gas you gotta use. However, I'm getting two very specific things out of this and those make up the whole reason I'm doing it. One, even though it will be hidden beneath the bumper, I know it looks absolutely wicked. And two, I'm getting a ton of welding exercise out of this. That's good enough for me. I cut up more pipe to start make things look more coherent. I offered it all up to the car to see where we stand and then figure out the length of the muffler and exhaust tip combo. Before proceeding with that, I tacked up the top side and once more put it on the car to make sure it was in perfect order. Which it absolutely was. Welded it up and it was starting to look like something. Pumped with that, I then cut the mufflers to size and offered it up to the car again, together with a 90 degree pie cut bend to make sure I was in the right spot. With that looking good, I welded out the last two pie cut bends as well. In total, we're talking about four 90 degree bends and four 45 degree bends. That amounts to a total of 36 pie cuts, as well as 28 welded seams between them for the system. So, worth it? You tell me. Anyway, next I bent up some stainless flat bar. I bent them up using a simple device I welded up for bending stainless steel rod exhaust hangers. But in this case, we're gonna hang this exhaust with flat bars to the chassis. Yep, drilling holes into a Ferrari feels great. I used stainless steel wire in my MIG welder to get everything tacked up on the car before welding it out on the bench. With that done, there was only one thing left to do, which was adding the mufflers with its tips that I just had cut. I marked up the exact spots underneath and threw on the last few seams. I made quick work of it and peeled off the protective plastic of the mufflers before taking a real look at my creation. To say that I'm pleased with the outcome is an understatement. This is the sort of stuff that is gonna be hanging on my walls when I go to the house. This is probably the most challenging piece I've welded to date, and I'm glad I did. Putting yourself through something that you're not comfortable with and then succeeding at the end can be quite rewarding, and this sure is. The objective was to obviously not make it look decent. We were all so curious how it actually sounded. But first, let me show you how it looks on the car after we ran it in.
The idling sound was pretty obnoxious, to say the least. While driving around in the mid-range, it falls off a bit, but when you start driving it out, it starts screaming like a madman. <laughs> Unfortunately, the video doesn't do the sound any justice at all. But trust me, the noise it makes up top is incredible. Another bucket list project in the books, and on to the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye.